All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Welcome back. Happy Friday afternoon. It is lunchtime. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, one. I think this is the first live I've done since the book came out. And now that I don't have a book attached to my hands anymore, which is just great uh, at our at our live um, uh, that we did for the book launch the other night, uh, we ended up giving the book away that was attached to my hand, which is an amazing, amazing, amazing feeling. Um, and we already put that in the mail to people. If you want a signed book, there are uh, tons over at Barnes & Noble. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more giveaways and kind of fun stuff here. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about... Um, about energy and I got to jump on to uh, we got a TV interview here in 15 minutes uh, Hello, a huge part of big money energy is uh, it's a little loud over here sorry a huge part of big, big money energy is changing your circumstances right when you can't change your circumstances you can change your energy um, uh, and that has always been huge for me my entire life if you cannot change your circumstance you can at least change your energy and when I first got into this business real estate business I had no money nothing in my pocket and I was trying to figure things out as I was going um, uh, I didn't know the left from right. I didn't know east side from west side. Actually, I was just telling someone a funny story. I was so self-conscious about being a real estate agent in New York City that I, uh, I made mistakes in showing people the wrong building. I once had a client who wanted to see things on the Upper East Side and I showed them a building on the Upper West Side and then I had to cover my tracks really quick and tell them uh, when they asked me, like, why are we going over to the Upper West Side? Instead of saying, oh, I made a mistake, I said, oh, it's important for price discovery so that you can see diversification, yeah. so you can see different types of buildings um, across the Upper East and Upper West. Um, uh, but, and I think we're going to bring in John Gordon here to, and to talk about energy, who's an amazing, amazing author. Um, uh, and I love his stuff. So let's bring him in. There we go. Hey, man. Hey, Ryan. How you doing? Good. How are you? Where are you? I am in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida right now. I love it. I just got back up from Florida. We're doing a bunch of deals in Florida now. Nice. Awesome. Where, where in Florida were you? Uh, we were just in Palm Beach, but I kind of go back and forth between Miami and Palm Beach. Uh, and then the Hamptons and um, uh, a little bit of Texas, actually, which is another good tax state for people. Okay. Um, That's why I'm in Florida right now. <laughs> I, I've been looking. Um, how many books do you have? I've written 23 books, 10 bestsellers. 23. Wow. Why do you think the 10 bestsellers were, were those 10? Good, good question. I think, um, I think it started with my, the Fable format, Energy Bus, The Carpenter, which is about building greatness, Training Camp with the Best Do Better. And then my more recent books all became bestsellers. The ones that didn't were like little, small, uh, yeah. illustrated kind of fables. And so those didn't. But... The other ones did because it reaches a business audience, it reaches a sports audience, it reaches a, a school audience. A lot of uh, schools use my work to create a yeah. great culture. So I think it, it appeals to different people. But I've also, out of those 23, five are children's books as well. So I've written yeah. five children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to talk to you about uh, energy for a few minutes. Um, and I know you're a busy guy, um, but, but I just thought it would be fun to jump on here because I, I just wrote a book that just came out two days ago called Big Money Energy. And energy is a huge part of my life. It's a huge part of how I drive confidence to, to you know, what I do and to my team and to my entire company. And I think that's what I end up really selling. I'm not selling brick and mortar. I'm selling energy, right? It's a transfer of energy. Um, uh, and in your book, The Energy Bus, can you tell everyone here um, who might not have gone through it what, it, what it's about and how important energy is to everyone's life? Yeah, en energy Bus is all about a guy who's miserable, negative. His team at work is in disarray. He has a flat tire. He has to take the bus to work. And he yeah. meets Joy, the bus driver, and she teaches him the, the, these secrets to life, right? Ten rules for the ride of your life to help you become a more positive person, to overcome adversity and challenges, and also to bring great energy to what you do. And so what yeah. we think about, we attract. And, and leadership is a transfer of belief and energy. Sales is a transfer of belief and energy. Like you said, people are always buying you. They're not buying your product. They're buying you. They're buying your energy. And so that energy that you have, you're, you're actually broadcasting every day up to five to 10 feet away feelings transmitted from your heart via electromagnetic signals. This is from heartmath.org heartmath research. And you're always broadcasting this energy, love and passion and care or apathy and indifference. And so your yeah, energy bus is all about fueling your life with positive energy so you can share with others. 
Yeah. How, how has, how has energy um, and the transfer of energy affected your, your personal life? Do um, uh, you have any kind of like personal anecdotes of kind of the reason why you wrote that book? Oh, totally. I mean, I was miserable and negative, unhappy. I was blaming my wife for why my life was so bad. And it was during the dot-com crash, 2001. And so yeah. I'm 31 years old and my life has fallen apart. Two small children, pressure, stress. I think a lot of people feel that right now. And yeah. so my, my wife said to me, I, I love you, but I'm not going to spend my life with someone who makes me so miserable. You need to change. <laughs> and so I, I had to change. And that began, like, that was day one of saying, I want to stay married. I want to be a better person. So the energy bus, the main character, George, was based on me because I was that guy who needed to get on the bus and needed to get positive. And so my wife's ultimatum changed my life because I was not bringing great energy, right? So I always saw the world in terms of energy. It's why I called, the, called it the energy bus. I love your yeah. title. I love your title because E equals MC squared means that anything that is matter is energy. So yeah. we are energy. We live in an energetic universe. And once you understand that, what kind of energy are you bringing every day to others? You are contagious, I tell people. We know that now in a negative way, right? Yeah. But, but, but love is contagious. Optimism is contagious. Hope is contagious. And kindness is contagious. I, I, that, it's, a great, it's a great point because I, I've always told people that um, uh, your energy then is, is you know, there, there's a transfer and then there's a law of attraction, right? If, if you bring strong, powerful, confident energy to the table, you will then attract other people who have the same level of energy. And that's how you can start to predict the future and get your life to where you want it to go. Does that, does that make sense to you? Oh, of course. I mean, what we think about, we attract. And so thoughts are energy and they also are things that we can put out into the world. And I think too often people have a limited belief mindset that keeps them from attracting what they want to attract. They don't think they deserve it. They don't yeah. think they deserve success. They feel unworthy or they don't believe it's possible. So they don't ultimately attract what they want to attract in life. We were imagined to imagine. We were created to create. I truly believe that we are not uh, here on our own. We were created, I believe, in a creator. I believe in a God. And I believe God created us with the power to create our future. And so you have to understand that you have that power. And energy is the way you do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it so much. What, what, what advice would you give to somebody right now? obviously they should get your book um uh but it, to you know if someone is going through a really hard time or at a really really tough 2020 or is just so overwhelmed with all the crap that they read because now everything is so it's not even 24 hours now now it's like 100 hours a day right you just get so much negative information um what's the what's the first thing someone can do to start changing their energy is it other than drinking coffee <laughs> you know i think that's like <laughs> when i talk that's what people say they're like I'm energetic from 7 a.m. to, you know, 8.30, and then I'd lose it. I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad you asked that because your positive energy, like what you bring to the table is everything. Right now, more than ever, I'm doing so many virtual keynotes to companies right now who are struggling with fear and anxiety. They got a lot of people who are facing setbacks. And so here's the key. Feed yourself every day with positivity. If you don't yeah. have it, you can't share it. So you have to make sure you're feeding yourself to feed others. And we're not Pollyanna positive, right? This is not Pollyanna. Po this is not about seeing the world through rose colored glasses. This is knowing that you have the power to overcome the thorns. This is not about ignoring reality. It's about maintaining optimism, belief, and faith to create a better reality. And so okay. the best advice I have for people right now is from Dr. James Gills. He's the only guy on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons, double Ironman, which means you do an Ironman a day later to another one, Last time he did, he was 59 years old, and he was asked how he did it. He said this, I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. And so if we listen, we hear the fear, the doubt, the negativity. But if we talk to ourselves, we can feed ourselves with the words and the encouragement we need to keep on moving forward. The word encourage means to put courage into. So yeah. we need to encourage ourselves to put courage into ourselves, and we need to encourage others to put courage into them. That's what you're doing you know, right now with Instagram and reaching out to people in your book, which is so amazing. Right. That's what we have to do now. So so every day realize that you're surrounded by negativity, but don't allow the doubt. Five D's doubt, distortion, which are negative thoughts and fear, discouragement, distractions, distractions, of the enemy of greatness and division. The word anxious literally means divided by at its Greek root word. Anxious means divided. Think about that. Yeah. And so we feel anxious. We feel divided. Don't allow those five D's to take hold. Instead, trust, 
speak truth to those lies, speak words of encouragement, focus on what matters most, your business, your relationships, investing in people, and then lastly, unite instead of divide. You have control, you have power, and you need to recognize that. This is kind of blowing my mind right now. I, I, I you know, the, the quote that you said from the guy that, that completed the Ironmans, I mean, that's, that's basically saying, listen, you stop playing so much defense and start playing offense, right? You're playing offense every day. Don't, don't listen to, don't listen to the doubt, right? Come at it from a, from a different point of view. Uh, that is a great, great piece of advice. You, so you mentioned that you do a lot of keynotes, uh, and I apologize for noise. I'm just in the office. Um, you do a lot of keynotes. You're doing them virtually. You know, I get a lot of people who say to me that they're they're terrified of of public speaking, um, uh, even here, even with just the screens. Um, what's a, what's a piece of advice you can give to people uh, if they were you know going to do a public speaking event? Great question. So I was really scared when I first started speaking. I was not a great speaker early on, and. You have a purpose. Your purpose must be greater than your challenges. Yeah. So when you are about to speak, don't worry about what you're going to be thought of or what people are looking at or thinking about you. Instead, I have something to say that can make a difference. And if I don't say it, I can't impact them. And so you have an obligation to speak and to share, to help others. So your purpose is greater than your challenges. And it's like anything, reps, right? Just continue, continually get better. I want to share with you a little analogy. I think this would be really great for your for your audience, because this is key right now. Yeah. Carrot, egg, and coffee bean. Remember this analogy, carrot, egg, and coffee bean. A carrot, you put carrot, in the hot water. Carrot, egg, and coffee bean, got it. Yeah, put a carrot in the hot water, what happens to the carrot? Uh, it gets all mushy. Yes, it gets softened. You put yeah. an egg in the hot water, what happens to the egg? We know this. Hey, boy, the, you boil the egg. Yeah, it gets hardened, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Right now, with all the pressure, stress, even about to speak, getting nervous before speaking. You could be like the egg and get hardened and bitter and angry and just not care. You could be like the carrot where you get weakened and you crumble from the inside out with anxiety, fear and pressure and stress. Or you could be like the coffee bean. You put a coffee bean into boiling hot water. Even if it's not ground up within an hour, it transforms the water into coffee. So it's not impacted by its environment. It transforms its environment. And so as you're speaking, as you're doing a Zoom, as you're going out in the world. I'm, right, I'm writing this down. <laughs> yeah, you transform the environment that you are in instead of allowing the impact, instead of allowing the environment to transform you. So don't let your circumstances affect you. You change your circumstances by your attitude, your energy, and how you show up every day through your thoughts, your beliefs, and your actions. So that's what we're talking about. So coffee bean is like my number one analogy. I wrote a book with a guy named Damon West called The Coffee Bean, came out about a year ago, already sold 100,000 copies because it's such an, a powerful message. It's like a 20 minute read, but it's just- it, Everyone go get, J Jason, please go get, go get John's book, The Coffee Bean, please, right now. You'll love right. it. Yeah. You, you, sold, you sold another copy, let me get one right now. Um, I have one, one last question for you and then, and then I'm gonna let you go. This is, I could talk to you for forever. Um, uh, I just started my own company. I was a real estate broker for 12 years working for another brokerage. And now I just went off in 2020 in the summer, built my own business uh, and launched it in the fall. Um, as someone who speaks to a lot of companies and someone who talks about leadership a lot, uh, I, you know, I don't want to put you on spot, but, but I guess it will. Uh, what, what advice do you have for me in, in 60 seconds? Wow. So as, as a new CEO right now. I, I, no, the, the, this is the key. You know, I worked with the Rams and Sean McVay when he took over as the new head coach of the Rams, right? So I worked sure. with Sean. But Dave Roberts became the manager of the Dodgers. I worked with Dave from the very beginning. So here's what you do at any position. When you start out a, with a new opportunity, a new business, yeah. what do you want to be known for? What do you stand for? What are your core values? What will drive you? What is your mission? And I, I have a good feeling of what your mission is. Once yeah. you know what you stand for, you know what your mission is. You know your why. You will know the way, right? So your core values should drive everything that you do. During, during a, a crisis, which we've experienced this past year, it reveals who you are, what you value, and what you believe. So as a company, who are we? Who do we, what do we, what do we want to be known for? What will we stand for? When the outside world looks at us, what will they see? And those values should guide everything that you do. And then from there, what do we value? And then we value our customers, we value making a difference, we value energy, right? What we value, we live those yeah. values every day. And then what do we believe and how are we going to live those beliefs every day? And that's really the key as, a, as an organization. You create no, that's culture. huge. Yeah. As a leader, you create the culture and then the culture drives everything that you do. So you have to really be strong on what that culture is all about. And clarity always leads to focus action. So when you have clarity and everyone who joins your company has clarity, 
they will take the focus action they need to succeed. And it's all about that, living those values, living them every day. Everybody today has a mission statement, but only the great organizations have people on a mission. And so are we on a mission? And you want to find people that are on a mission with you. You, you are a gift. Um, this has been awesome. Uh, this, this has been great. Uh, thank you so much for, for jumping on and talking. Like I said, I could talk to you forever, but I'm going to let you go. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, you're the best. And yeah, we, we, so we just bought your book, Coffee Bean. I think I'm just going to go buy the rest of them, all 23. Check out the energy bus and the power. You'll like the power of positive leadership too. You'll, and yeah. the carpet, my favorite for entrepreneurs about building a business, building greatness. You'll really like the carpenter. And I think you'll get some good ideas for your business. And I just want to say congratulations, man. You're, you got an amazing following. You're, you're growing and it's uh, exciting to be with you. I was, I was honored you asked me to speak. So thanks so much for doing that. Thanks, man. Thanks. I'll see you soon. All right, Ryan. Take care. See ya.